Okay, today I am disassembling this Revyman PR1400 bicycle light. I just got done soaking this under water for 10 minutes. I dried the water from the outside. Let's see if there's anything on the inside. Inside these little protective covers here, um, I do see just a drop or two of water around the edges. I don't see anything inside the actual USB ports, so it's possible that these little rubber gaskets did protect the USB ports from getting any water inside. Let me, uh, I've dried all the edge water out there. And I don't see anything coming out, so it may be that these little protective rubber ports did a good job. Let's take this guy apart. Looks like it's a hex head screw of some sort. I have a 1.5 millimeter, yes, so my 1.5 millimeter tip hex head is working well on these guys. And each of these screws has a rubber washer on the inside. So just under the screw head here is a tiny little rubber washer. All right, I popped that off. There is a rubber gasket that goes all the way around here. It made a distinct pachop noise when I pulled it off. Um, so the inside looks completely dry, so that's a good sign. Let me work on the front here. So the front screws are smaller and they do not have a rubber gasket or washer on them. Yeah, so that just pulled this guy off. Now there is some water on the inside of this guy. So water has gotten into the inside of this. And there is a gasket here. So there's water, just little tiny drops around this edge. And then there's a gasket here that came off. And I don't see, well, no, there's just a tiny bit of water inside the screw hole there, but I don't see anything on the inside of that gasket. All right, so the lenses came out. The lens with the little, um, lines across it was on the left hand side and then the lens that does not have the lines across it was on the right hand side and the little white reflector came out this one as well all right so inside we have a circuit board it says Revman and there's a number 2342, and there's some numbers XML2. Um, it looks like it's a circuit board that has the LEDs, and there is, it looks like some silicone sealant of some sort around the bottom of this. There's three small Phillips head screws holding this circuit board in place, and it does look like it might be, well, no, it's not fully sealed, because at the top here where these plus and minus wires come into the lights, there's openings there, but there's no water in here. So it looks like the um, gaskets and sealing system here and this guy here, which is a lens system, um, looks like that kept the water out pretty darn well. So inside of here, we have a small circuit board on a flexible con cable that connects to our ports. And inside, it looks like we have two 18650 batteries in a little plastic thing here. There is a back piece here that snapped over those batteries as well. So these are soldered on. There's no way to remove the um, circuit board from this wire here. If I had to guess, I see nothing holding it in the back. So if I had to guess, I think if I take these three screws out and if I were to scrape off that gunk, the protective Sealy gunk, I think it would all pull out the front. Maybe these buttons would have to go down a bit. I'm not sure 
about the lights and the circuit board in the window here. I don't know if that just slides off the window or not. It looks like it would slide out the front out from the bottom of the window there. So to do that, I think I would need to remove these four small Phillips screws here so this circuit board could come out the front with the rest of the unit. I'm going to, before I do that, I'm going to take this off because I'm not sure if these connect to something, but they could certainly go through. So again, it's 1.5 millimeter hex head. Um, these screws, again, are completely different from the other sets. So the two screws that hold on the connection to the bicycle handlebar mount are a different length. Now, underneath this mount, there's a little bit of water down there. But it was just trapped between this piece of plastic and this box here. Now, there's no rubber gasket here. Um, and I just see tiny, tiny little bits of water in there, but no evidence that water would have gone through those screw holes, especially with these screws in there. There's no gaskets or anything on these screws. Um, it looks like those screws go into the aluminum extrusion, but do not go through it to anything else. All right, there are four screws that hold this USB port circuit board to the black plastic plug that goes into the back of this aluminum extrusion. And I call it an aluminum extrusion, but there is parts of it that have been milled down. Um, so this plug can push into the extrusion. So I'm not sure if it was an extrusion that then they milled the inside out or if the whole thing is milled. It, it looks like an extrusion. But like this part here doesn't have the same things coming out of it. So it might be this entire case has been milled down in certain spots. All right, so these four screws appear identical, Phillips head. There's the USB port, and this has a decent amount of rubber gasket around the base of these USB ports, and they're soldered through. So it does look like if you had this guy in place, even if the doors were open, it looks like the water would get into the USB port body, but not down past it into the circuit breaker. At least it looks like they've made a, a good attempt to keep that from happening. Okay, let's take these three screws on the front. Now the three front screws are silver as opposed to black. They're not very long. It actually looks like we're missing one because there's two holes on the left and right side here. Um, and in the bottom of the extrusion here, it looks like there's places for two holes and then a center hole. Um, so they only had one silver screw there, which should be plenty. I mean, three screws in the front here seems like a decent number. Um, but it's possible that there was supposed to be another screw in there that was not placed there in the factory. screw is loose. Oh, it's coming out. All right, look at that. I'm pulling on the screw and the entire circuit board came out. So apparently the screw was out of the extrusion but still stuck in the circuit board somehow. And it looks like I can just push forward potentially. Nope. Let's take the circuit board out and see what's in there. But this here is still soft, so it looks like a thermal paste, actually. So I, I lied, that was not a sealant, that's a thermal paste to thermally conduct the heat away from this circuit board to the um, case. 
So you're not imagining it when the case gets hot. So this circuit board appears to have a solid copper backing plate. It might be, there's a, yeah, it looks like there's a circuit board on top of a solid copper heat spreading backing plate. So yeah, as far as I can tell, there's a plastic piece in here that covers the front of the batteries. And there's a circuit board along the top. I think my suspicion is these rubber pieces stay in the case and the circuit board slides out from underneath it but I'm pushing on it moderately hard and it doesn't want to slide much here so I'm getting the batteries sliding but the circuit board itself on top of the batteries doesn't want to slide So the batteries are in parallel, so there's a single 18650 cell or a, two, a 2P arrangement of 18650 cells. So the light part definitely has to come out the front. It's possible the circuit board goes out the back because they soldered the lights to the circuit board. And there's a thermal sensor in here that touches the back of the lights. So I did notice some thermal throttling, and I can see why, because there is a tiny little thermal sensor that touches the back plate of this copper light um, heat dis disperser there. So it's important that that thing be in the right position to touch that to thermally limit this guy. So I was not able to get that circuit board to slide forward or backwards. It may be glued, it may be something else. Um, you could replace the batteries without taking the circuit board out. You can see there's the black wire and the red wire there. So if you unsolder those solder joints, you could pull this two pack of batteries out, put a new two pack of batteries in, solder those solder joints in and reconnect it. Um, then all you have to do basically is have this little spacer that fits back in there, push the spacer with the batteries in, and then reassemble the rear of this unit. So the batteries, if you unsolder those two joints, could come out and be replaced with a, you know, it's a pretty standard two pack of 18650s. They're just in, in a two parallel configuration. So one series, two parallel configuration. You just have to get the wires in the center and approximately the right length to solder on there. So it, it's certainly doable to replace those batteries without taking the front or the rest of the circuit board out. So the front gasket's pretty good here. We have a gasket that goes all the way around the extrusion and it touches the inside of this flat plastic. Touches the inside of this flat plastic surface, which goes in there. So the screws that go through here are holding that waterproof plastic against this gasket. All the screws go through the outside of that gasket. So this piece of aluminum that's holding it on is just for stability and kind of as, as a pinching mechanism, but doesn't have anything to do with the waterproofing of that particular um, joint to the front. And so when I slide that arm, it stops just a little bit before this thing and the screws will pinch that gasket and pinch the gasket in place. So basically there's just a little hairline there. When I screw the screws in, it goes almost all the way down. Um, it, it pinches the gasket pretty well there. All right, takeaways from disassembling this, aluminum, stainless steel all on the outside. There's gaskets protecting from water ingress on the front and the back. There's additional gaskets inside here. So even if these are open, you get water in the ports, it won't go past the ports because there's gaskets on the inside there as well. It's powered by two 18650 batteries on the inside, not easily user replaceable. But if you unscrew these three screws with a 1.5 millimeter hex head, um, you can pull this out and there's two wires. If you unsolder those two wires and take a little plastic cover off, you could pull the batteries out, put a different set of batteries in, solder them in place, and then screw this back in with those three screws. So it's not super difficult to replace the batteries. It's not a user type serviceable battery replacement, but it could have the batteries replaced in it if there's somebody who knows how to solder um, and you'll need a uh, two parallel 
set of 18650 batteries that fit inside there. Um, so all in all, taking it apart made me more impressed with the build quality, and I am pretty pretty happy with this flashlight. I can definitely recommend this flashlight as long as your handlebars will fit properly in this clip.